Welcome to another episode of Driving with Andy. I'm still driving through Colorado. And as I drive through Colorado, I'm reminded of, uh, of an issue that came up when I was in Las Vegas dropping off a couple dogs. And the, there's always the issue of the equipment. What is it that we're going to use to um, help people with their dogs? And I was meeting a brand new, uh, a brand new trainer to me. She may have been in the business for a while, but she's new to me. And uh, you know, you always wonder how people are going to take things and where their focus is. You got the the purely positive kind of people. You got the click and treats. You got the um, you know the treat only. You have people that are electronic color only or pinch color only. And uh, as you know, if you've been following Falco Canine Academy for any amount of time, we find the tool that fits best for both the human and the dog. And if and then, if the human wants to just simply just do a click and treat program or purely positive or something like that, then we do our best to help them uh, while we make sure that they understand you know, what our opinion is and where we see the problems in, in whatever it is they chose or selected to be their training format and that kind of stuff or you know we root them along and say you know what you know how to use this tool very well or if you responded to our training very well and you're doing a great job continue doing what you're doing so um, I just want to bring, bring up the uh, the the topic of what is the best tool for every dog and and why might it be appropriate for a correction uh, or why might it be appropriate to only have a reward uh, base system and I, and I, and I shy away from uh, anything that's purely anything. I hate the word never. I hate the word hate. <laughs> I hate the word always. Uh, what, I, what you need to do is you need to be open to all the possibilities that you and your dog may need X. Your dog may need Y, uh, even though you may not care for it or you've never used it on any other of your dogs up to this point, but for whatever reason, this dog that you have at this time with this particular set of problems probably would respond best to uh, Z. All right, so um, the important thing to consider is, is this, that I truly, truly, truly believe just like a child, a dog needs to know when they are performing a bad behavior or doing something wrong or doing something very wrong like biting, growling, snarling, lunging and the system that you need to find is what's going to be appropriate to break through the dog at that very moment. So for instance, in the case of aggression, aggression in a dog puts the dog's mental uh, capacity or mental situation into a place which heightens a whole bunch of other functions in the dog. Uh, one of them inclu uh, includes the uh, level of pain tolerance um, and what it's going to take to break through the aggression to tell the dog that what he's doing at that very moment is wrong because waving a treat in front of the dog's face when he's truly aggressive, and I'm talking about true aggression, not some of the other aggression that I that people come to us with, which is not. I'm talking about true aggression, where the dog is, is either fighting for its life in its brain, or defensive or fearful that it's gonna die. And you have this aggression that a, a stake waved in front of the dog's face is not going to get the dog's attention. The dog would step over the stake to f defend itself or to defend the owner or whatever the case may be. And there needs to be some form of cor correction that will break through to the dog to say, you know what, uh, me, as your leader, have this, has this handled and you do not need to act this way and I'm telling you to stop and you need to find whatever that is. So. Uh, in addition, you need to consider that if you choose a certain tool, then you want to make sure that it's not a tool that's going to heighten, heighten the, the fear or the anxiety which is causing the aggression. So, uh, now we talk about a pinch collar. This is, a, this is a, probably one of the most common things that is the best tool and sometimes the worst tool to use in aggression. So how do we find this? How do, how do I find it? And um, this is where I'm gonna just kinda of hit this one spot and then we're gonna call this one good, but there's so many other aspects. I don't want you to think that this is the only end-all be-all 
uh, answer to this particular question, but I'm just going to tell you this one. When we t bring a dog in, so let's take the two dogs we just had, Shino and Sheena. They uh, uh, you know, were dropped off at our office. When I first saw them, they were trying to attack me, both of them, um, snarling, slobbering, you know, growling, all the stuff that people had, you know, two kinds of safety things on two different kinds of collars and these really thick, uh, heavy leashes. And uh, I get a hold of the dogs about you know 15 minutes later and find out that um, there's not that that much aggression. So in our training process, the wrong thing for me to do would to throw pinch collars or electronics collars on these dogs right off the bat and say you know we're going to teach these dogs a lesson. Uh, that is not the uh, the appropriate answer. That is not any form of training that would be successful, I believe, although it happens all the time, I know it uh, for a fact because I've seen it, that the appropriate action is to start with minimal um, uh, aversion technique. So a flat collar around the dog's neck um, so that we have to have, because at some point you have to put a leash on this dog and walk him around. And without a muzzle, now again, I'm not telling any of you to do this um, unless you're professionals and know what you're doing or have a professional watching. I'm telling you what I do, all right? So don't take an aggressive dog, unmuzzled, and then uh, start playing, uh, let's see if he'll bite me, games. All right, so, um, but this is what I do. And because a muzzle can add to the defensiveness, can add to the fear to the dog, and you're not getting a true read whether the dog is aggressive or not. So I choose uh, to, to go to the, the least amount of compulsion um, possible, a flat collar, a belt collar uh, with a leash, and simply begin to walk the dog around. And as time goes on, begin to uh, uh, go through some obedience training with the dog and see what the dog's response is, and then go from there. If at some point I realize that you know this dog will operate better with a choke chain or a, a pinch collar, electronic collar, I work up to that until it uh, begins to uh, be apparent that it's gonna backfire. Uh, and then we, we take a step back. But you do it gradually. You don't jump, which I see, un unfortunately, excuse me, <laughs> all the time, where people will jump from uh, you know, seeing aggression right to the most compulsive type of, 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 of tool, training tool, possible and there's no success. Now maybe for a moment you'll see the dog say to himself, well I'm afraid I'm gonna die so I'm not gonna do this thing. That's not always appropriate because it's not necessarily training. It's just the dog is gonna withhold that aggression until uh, it's uh, at a, until it's at a time or a place where it, it can let that out and that particular type of tool or compulsion isn't available. All right, so um, my solution, bring a dog in. Dog has some extreme problems. We start from the lowest con uh, compulsion uh, tool possible and work up. And as time goes on, we are able to find whatever tool is gonna work for this dog. Now, back to these two dogs really quick before I end this, is that uh, I chose to train the dogs without any type of pinch collar and compulsion. And uh, a, but when I gave the dogs back, I suggested a pinch collar for both, or all three of the um, humans in this, those particular dogs' lives because they don't have the training, they don't have the experience, they don't have the strength and the power uh, that I do from 30 years of experience. And so that tool would be best for them. All right, so we're gonna have to come back to this. This can be very complicated, but I wanna just kinda touch on it so you guys kinda understand what it is that we do and how we do it and how I decide which tool we're gonna use for uh, any particular dog. All right, so I hope that was helpful to you. Sorry I was looking forward for the most part there, but I was going through a construction area and uh, there was a lot going on, so I wanted to be able to communicate all the stuff and think without having to worry about my, my camera angles and this particular thing. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Take care, bye-bye.